Hi and welcome to Point of Care Ultrasound Geek. My name is Jared Marks. I'm an emergency physician and ultrasound director for a residency program and I've been teaching ultrasound to people, uh, residents for several years now. I find soft tissue ultrasound highly useful in the ED. I have a provider say to me often that they can tell if there's an abscess or cellulitis or if it's cellulitis or other injuries there without ultrasound. I would tell you that, you know, Studies are showing that not to be true, that it's, uh, we can definitely um, detail better what's going on below the skin by using soft tissue ultrasound and that management often changes once ultrasound is used. Also there's some studies to show uh, that we might have more successful drainage of abscesses when present. So I would encourage you 100% of the time, whether you think it's cellulitis or abscess, to do ultrasound as it might change your management. And over the next few videos, hopefully this will help you to understand how to use soft tissue ultrasound in, in the care of your patients. In this video, we're going to talk simply about edema that's present. Edema is typically what you're going to see when only cellulitis is present. Please do not ultrasound the breast. I don't think that's within the purview of point of care ultrasound. I think that is requires expertise beyond that that we have with point of care ultrasound. I would tell you that even amongst radiologists that there are many that do not read breast tissue ultrasound and maybe even your breast surgeons do not. The reason why is because in a, a uh, breast cancer can appear much like an abscess. It can get a discharge with it. It can create an area that looks like an abscess and I would not, I would hate to have you incise into uh, breast cancer and not an abscess. So please do not ultrasound the breast tissue. Leave that up to your experts. I think that's without is beyond the expertise of point of care ultrasound. When we look at this, who are we going to perform this on? We're going to be performing this on people with pain, redness, swelling, warmth to an area, and possibly even systemic fever. It I would encourage you again 100% of the time, even if you think it's a cellulitis, to take a look with an ultrasound. Just drag along the area and make sure there's no abscess that needs to be drained. If there's an abscess present, it's unlikely to get better with just antibiotics alone. And I would encourage you to use ultrasound to determine if that's present or not. Here we see the back of a patient's leg that came in and was having some pain in this area. As you can tell, there's mild uh, redness in the area. It was slightly warm to the touch and she had pain but no uh, fever and no significant swelling that we could see externally. However, we'll see her ultrasound throughout the remainder of this video. So when we look at this image here we can see what the layers of tissue should look like. We have our epidermis at the very top. This is a very thin layer Often you're not going to appreciate much difference. As you can see, there's a slight hyperchoic line. The adipose tissue is typically what we're going to focus on. That's going to be sitting above the fascial layer. That's where the typical you're typically going to see your edema, your abscess, hematomas, those type of things. It's not to say you can't have them in the muscle, and you should pay attention to your muscle, but that's typically where just a cellulitis and abscess will sit. Um, and that's typically what we're going to take care of at the bedside and not in the OR. If we take that same area of the body and just rotate the probe into long axis here, we can see along here there's a fascial plane. Here's our adipose tissue or fat layer again. Here's our striations through our muscle. Here's another fascial layer with some muscle below that. Once again, we're going to look in this main area. Now, if you notice when we start teaching this in this video, I've shown you normal. I would 100% of the time recommend that you look at the normal side first. So patients typically have a contralateral extremity that we can image. If you're on the trunk um, and can't go all the way to the contralateral side, then view adjacent tissue. Often um, where I see mistakes is when people only image what they think is the pathology and they misidentify normal tissue or a variant as um, abnormal. So I'd encourage you to 100% of the time look at your normal side first and then continue on to your affected side. So what we're talking about today in this video is soft tissue edema. This is what we'll typically see in a cellulitis. So un unfortunately edema due to cellulitis looks exactly like edema due to heart failure 
and looks like edema due to fluid overload. Um, edema in the soft tissues looks the same regardless of the pathology. And so you got to be very careful about this. Here's the two areas we're going to look at that we're going to have loss of soft tissue differentiation and it will be typically hyperechoic in the region. So we're going to look at a normal video here first. We can see here a fascial layer and here's our adipose layer and that's where we're going to look. We can see some hyperechoic structures throughout that but it doesn't all look the same and we have muscle down below. We're going to rotate our probe into a short axis. Again here's our fascial layer. Here's our adipose tissue layer. Epidermis is up here. We're going to look at our muscle here. We don't see any pathology or any issues there. And then once again we can see that there's some differentiation. There's some um, hyperechoic and hypoechoic areas throughout the adipose tissue. Now if we compare that to and the affected area in this patient, we see the fascial layer again. And above that, we can appreciate that there is loss of soft tissue differentiation. And we don't see those same hyperechoic and hypoechoic structures. It's just hyperechoic everywhere. If we continue to image the area, we can see over here maybe some anechoic structures. We'd want to pay attention to that to make sure it's not an abscess or if it's a vessel. This may be what we call cobblestoning developing. We'll look at that in a later video. Same thing here. This is just going down for the leg. We see some fluid tracking through here. This does not look like an abscess, which we'll be able to do in a later video also. But here's our hypercoic structure. The big thing we're paying attention to is we have loss of um, tissue differentiation and it's hypercoic. Here's an example of a vessel tracking through there. Notice how it's well circumscribed. We could put pressure on it like we do when we verify veins for vascular access or for DVT. And we could verify that it's a vessel. You could throw color or, or power Doppler over it or um, pulse wave Doppler. And you can see the flow through that. And lastly, we have that structure rotated out in a long axis. Once again, the soft tissue or the fascial layers here we have loss of soft tissue differentiation and it's hyperechoic. So hopefully reviewing these findings is useful to you. Remember that these are nonspecific and can relate to any type of edema, not just cellulitis, but other things that lead to edema um, in the legs or in the soft tissues. However, hopefully this will help you to, in the right clinical scenario, assure that there's no abscess present and that there is, um, it is only cellulitis or vice versa. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful uh, in the use of soft tissue ultrasound. If you have any questions about this or ultra, other point of care ultrasound applications, feel free to email me at pocusgeek at gmail.com.